Welcome to the Leadonomics Show. I'm with Gary Schwamland, who is the President and CEO for Willow Creek. Gary, great to have you here on our show. Yes, it's my pleasure. You know, tell us a bit about yourself, because you have an interesting background. I, I, I noticed a German uh, accent yes. in the background, yeah. mm -hmm. uh, and your names are very German, I guess. Very much. T so tell, tell us a bit of yourself, how, you know, what, what happened in your early days and what led you to become President and CEO of Willow Creek Association? Yeah, that's uh, most unexpected. I mean, I grew up in Germany. I uh, have an engineering degree in Germany and then went to the States and studied there and started uh, to work for an American corporation and I was uh, to be trained to be sent uh, to the European headquarters and instead they sent me to Singapore. Oh wow. So I've lived... Uh, so our neck of the woods. Right, <laughs> your neck of the woods. I lived six years in Singapore and I was director for Asia for a sizable um, Fortune 10 company in the United States. And uh, after 15 years of overseas assignment, I was re uh, asked to return to the U.S. And um, shortly afterwards, I was, um, I felt the call to leave my corporate life. I had done quite well, was financially independent, and uh, then uh, started working for the Willow Creek Association to build their international ministry. Mm -hmm. Tell us a bit about the Willow Creek uh, Association. Because it's different from the Willow Creek Church, church that, that yeah. Bill Hybel leads, right? Mm -hmm. Well, the Willow Creek Church is a very large church in the suburbs of Chicago. Uh, many, many people came to Willow Creek, to the church, to wanting to know how can you build this kind of a church, a large, large church. And so in order to uh, keep the church functioning, they said we need to s set up a separate organization to teach people how we do church. Eventually, it came down to leadership. So today, all we do is to do leadership development, uh, teaching and training. And we have a conference, it's called the Global Leadership Summit. It's now in 128 countries around the world. Last year, we had 405,000 people attend this conference. Wow. And it's growing uh, tremendously. I mean, last year, just to give an idea, in one year, we grew by 72,000 people in attendance. So it's, there's quite a need out there for leadership, as you well know. Mm. And, and I know our leadership is a space we are very passionate about. I mean, yeah. what, what do you guys do in terms of the leadership space? I mean, is there a process or is there a methodology or it's uh, more exposure to great leaders and enabling that to happen? That's true. We have um, our principal thrust, if, uh, if you're familiar with that term. I mean, we focus on two things, to teach leadership and try to reach the maximum number of people and be through a conference that we have probably world-class speakers and then try to do workshops throughout the year to deepen what they have learned at the conference itself. And this is open to everybody, right? The whole world. It's open right? to everybody. And now, yeah. it has a Christian background because we're coming from a church and we certainly are influenced very much in our teaching. Uh, however, many of the speakers we have in that conference are not Christians because we believe uh, we can learn from everybody. Mm. I mean, leadership is a fairly neutral, I mean, there's no, it's like Christian music, there's no Christian music, there's music. Some has a Christian uh, you lyrics, know, to it, lyrics to it or text. And it's the same with leadership. I mean, leadership is leadership. And probably one of the greatest leaders who ever lived is quite acknowledged in, in uh, anywhere around the world is Jesus Christ. We can uh, learn a lot from his leadership principles but we, again, as I said, we have leaders that have accomplished great things in the marketplace, the military, education, church, business, you name it. Mm. And I know you had Jack Welsh in yes. one of your GLSs yes, uh, we did. a couple of years ago. Um, you know, so, so during the session, what sort of insights do, do we get? And, and, and how do we go about uh, executing these insights in our life? Yes, when we put together a conference, it's an annual conference, we don't really have a theme. We kind of look for leaders that have a track record of having accomplished something. For instance, in the coming summit this year, we have Sheryl Sandberg from, from um, Facebook. Facebook. Yep. And again, when you look at her, what she has accomplished, or uh, you know, many other speakers, so we are trying to uh, expose our audience to um, concepts challenging concepts because if you only hear what you already believe in you cannot grow mm. so we we want to challenge all of our listeners to new concepts even those with 
which they may disagree because this disequilibrium will help them to grow as leaders. And, and, and why leadership? I mean, there's many, many things, you know, there's education, there's, there's a whole bunch of things that, you know, we need to focus on in this world, that there are gaps to be fixed. Um, why, why leadership as a specific focus? Um, well, in the end, uh, as I think it's uh, John Maxwell who says, everything rises and falls around right. leadership. I mean, again, good leaders make education better. Good leaders build better churches. Good leaders are better in the military, in the government. I mean, leadership is really the key to any great development, and you have seen it throughout history. So leadership matters, it really matters. And, and Willow Creek Association, what, your, what is your core charter? I mean, is to, is to propagate leadership in all its forms across, the, or is there a focus that you go into developing countries? Or is, is there a specific focus, or is it just a general uh, you know, leadership for all mantra? Well, our vision, if I may uh, quote our vision statement, is helping Christians. That's our primary target audience are Christians. However, it's open to everybody and many, many that attend are not Christians. But our primary target are Christians to help them in their leadership development. Because again, if a church functions well, it makes a huge impact in a community because it's not only about spreading the gospel, it's also a lot about doing good. Mm -hmm. I mean, you look around the world today, I mean, there's a lot of places that have a need for doing good. Refugees, economic, yep. poverty, I mean, racism, I mean, you name it. And I think it's the message of the church to help in those areas to, make, to create a better world. Mm. And, and, and yourself personally, I mean, I'm sure you've gone through a you know, progression in terms of your own leadership and, yes. and your journey, right? Tell us a bit about that self. I mean, what was it? Was it a you know a linear line, or I mean, were there were there crucible moments? I mean, what, what were some interesting things that happened in your life as you progress in your leadership journey? You know, it's interesting to ask that question. I'm turning 74 actually tomorrow. Wow, you look yeah, you know, 74 20, tomorrow. <laughs> and uh, I have been in leadership in the significant uh, functions for about um, 45 years and of course you learn a lot when i think back to my time when i was out here in singapore i was director for asia had all these countries from australia to china to pakistan report to me sometimes i shatter what i did to these people because i didn't know what leadership is all about i did the best i could and uh, sometimes that was terrible so of course i have learned a lot in leadership you know again i grew up in a german house household I was not taught to uh, praise other people. I never ever in my whole life was praised by my parents that I did something good. Now that affects you. And you also know from leadership that if you do not praise other people, if you don't give a well done, yeah. a recognition, acknowledgement, your leadership will only go to a certain level. So this is just one, one thing I had to learn also with my children to kind of acknowledge when they do something good, to praise other people when they do great work. That was just one of the, or so many things that I learned through my 45 years that I, when I think back, I'm ashamed what I did to some of the people early on. Okay. Pretty bad. <laughs> All right, we're gonna come back to talk a little bit more on uh, your leadership journey and also the whole Velo Creek Association and how yep. you guys grew from something so small yep. into something so significant. We'll be right back here on the Leader Armix Show in a few minutes. Welcome back. Uh, and here with Gary, and we're talking about Willow Creek Association, and we've had just had a conversation on leadership. And you know, let's talk about your association because I think you you were head of international mm -hmm. and expanded, you know, significantly. And you, yeah. like you mentioned, almost um, half a million country. half a million people on a yeah. yearly basis, yeah. you know, attend your conferences and and, yeah. and listen to your leadership insights. How did you guys scale? I mean, you were small. You know, initially it was a small church in the U.S. and grew mm -hmm. big, and then the association set up, and then not just in the U.S. but you scaled globally. Um, talk us through that process. I mean, is there some lessons that we can learn if we are a company here in Malaysia or Singapore or one of these? And look, we really want to expand globally. How do we do it? Are there some lessons that you can share with us? Well, first of all, I mean, there has to be a need. You know, any product that doesn't have a need out there can only go so far. There is a huge need for leadership development. The people are realizing all around the world that today in, our, in a global economy in which we are, leadership is really the competitive advantage. 
the better leadership, the greater the you know, potential success. It's the same in what we're doing in church and anywhere. We are not only reaching church people. So what happened is when people from a given country heard about the summit, attended somewhere else, and they said, oh, we need to have this in our country. Would you come to Malaysia? Would you come to Thailand, Myanmar, Vietnam? I mean, you name it. I mean, every country in the region, basically on invitation from some people that realized that the kind of conference and other materials we have is of great value for them. So there's a huge need, people recognize, that without great leadership, servant-based leadership, uh, you cannot accomplish great results. So it starts with need. So we really have to know if there's a need in if other countries for our service right. or our product and so on. Okay. And then again, one of our values is excellence. We have a, one of our value statement is excellence honors God and inspires people. So what we do when we created the Leadership Summit, we want to, when people leave, we want them to say, wow, unbelievable. And if they say that, we know we made Succeeded. an impact. Okay. And so we create a conference that is probably one of the highest value conferences you can attend. And we hear that from many, many people that have extended. So there's a need. We do a conference that certainly brings some of the world's best speakers on leadership. Right. So need and, and really that what you're saying is you have to have excellent products and services. Excellent right? You have product, to be world class. Right? And then we execute with great excellence. Mm. And, and you mentioned, I mean, we had this conversation a little bit earlier on culture, right? Yeah. You say that plays a significant role in terms of driving scale and, 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 and growth, right? Talk right. us a bit about the culture that you created or your team has created in Willow Creek Association and how that helped you to scale. Well, one of the things uh, I noticed when I took over as president, we had gone through a very challenging period, downsizing, letting many people go, the staff and was this demotivated. Is in in your organization, really? Yeah, okay. Yeah. We had many, many different uh, conferences that had run its course. They just were losing a lot of money. So we had to uh, terminate them. And of course, the staff that was associated with them had to go out with them. So the, uh, the remaining staff were demotivated, uh, disillusioned, wondering if there's a future. And when I came in, one of the things that I learned during my, um, you know, again, many, many years of leadership is you, one of the uh, statements about leadership is you have to help people to create a better future, to give them hope. Uh, and so I, I noticed that in our company, People were hopeless. They didn't know, do I have a future here? How long will you stay around? Well, it all is related to culture. So we had to make a drastic improvement in culture. There's an organization, well, there are many organizations in the States, but the one we use, it's called the Best Christian Workplace. So we did a culture survey, and the survey showed that our culture was called toxic. <laughs> toxic. Toxic. I mean, it doesn't get any worse. <laughs> So you're bottom the word, of the food chain. Huh? I mean, it's, it's <laughs> toxic. You all, the, the word itself describes. Today, we are among the top Christian workplaces in the world in, uh, in, within four years. Mm -hmm. And so it was apparent to me that we had to make some very drastic changes very quickly. And, and what were some of these changes? Because to move from toxic to one of the best is, in four years is quite a feat, you know. But one of the things is you have to have an exciting vision. I've always believed the power of vision. Mm. Uh, Bill Hybels has a statement, it says, vision creates passion in people. If you have an exciting vision, right. a clear mission, and really clear values, that's I think the basic principle, before you can develop strategy and goals. And so that's what we did. We created an exciting vision that people could buy into it, uh, be passionate about, and then, you know, created the other thing I learned in my corporate uh, time. We were managed through challenging goals. Basically, we were set a goal and basically management said, okay, figure it out. How do you do it? So I set a very challenging goal. I remember when I presented that goal, that by the year 2020, we would like to have 500,000 people attend the summit. The whole staff said, crazy. ridiculous, <laughs> crazy, impossible, cannot be done. And I said, you're right. It cannot be done if we don't change our approach. So let's figure out a way, what do we have to do different? And so uh, having an exciting vision, very clear mission, setting an exciting goal, and then we said, well, let's figure out a strategy. How do we reach that goal? We developed, we changed our strategy, and uh, in 2016, 
we are one year ahead of where we thought we would be. So the changing the culture, I think, was one of the absolute key success features in that whole strategy, in that whole growth strategy. And when you change the culture, were there rituals that you changed, or was it just oh, um, beliefs? What, what were some of those uh, tweaks that you made? Well, you know, little things, recognition. I developed a President's Award. Uh, we were all in silos. And I said, you know, I don't want you to come to me and complain about a staff member. I want you to complain, come to me and say, so-and-so has done something extraordinary beyond his normal job assignment. When you see that, you come to me, and if we think it's worthwhile, the Human Resource Director and I, we give them a President's Award. And today, when you walk through the offices, Many, many people proudly display that little certificate. So, and this is unlimited, award. unlimited to as many... Absolutely. Any, Anyone who anytime. comes to me, sometimes at a staff meeting, we hand out three awards. Okay. Just last week, we handed out one award to our financial person who did a fantastic audit. You know, our auditors came back saying, man, oh man. She had, so again, rewarding people. My office is always open, accessible. Um, you know, a, lot, a lot of leaders say that, but yeah. did you intentionally create... Because a lot of leaders say, oh, my office is always open, but nobody comes to their office. <laughs> um, but was, was there something that you did to ensure that people do come? And people, people come. Do? I mean... I, why, why do they come? <clears throat> because I'm accessible. I walk around the office quite a bit. I would walk around and sing a song. Okay. Very unusual. That works. <laughs> Or, you know, I would stop with people and joke around with them. I mean, I'm very, very accessible. Right. And uh, the other thing that I believe made a difference in the culture, that uh, I'm not any better than the rest of them. They all can tell me when I'm wrong. They all have the right to speak up. And this took quite a while. There's still some people today, they would start out a sentence saying, uh, Gary, if you, if you allow me, can I say that I may not quite agree with this? It makes me quite angry. I said, you have as much right as anyone else to say, this is really garbage. I mean, this is no good. So uh, it's, it's taking a, a while before staff feels comfortable speaking up and telling you that's not a good strategy, but it's, it's coming now. Most people feel the freedom and the liberty to speak very openly saying, you know, I think this is a lousy strategy. I think we need to change it. Accessibility, getting them all involved right down to the assistant of a, of a senior director in the strategy. Um, uh, the other thing we made our goals, they're jointly accountable goals. In other words, none of us can achieve a goal alone. Yeah. So if we have a whatever goal it may be in marketing, it may be in finance, Get them all together. there are the four or five initials that have to contribute to this goal. So you as a department head, you have to go to the other person and say, Scott, Elise, whatever it is, will you join me in this goal? And then if they say yes, they know exactly what to do. Because what I did not want to happen, and it happens too often, at year end when you sit down and you do your performance reviews, somebody says, well, I didn't accomplish my goal because, because Rojan did not deliver marketing material on time. That always happens. I said, don't come to me. Go to Rojan and say, hey, you committed. By May 1, you have the marketing strategy. So don't come to me, you got to figure this out. And we have rewards you know, for goal achievement. So if you don't make your goal, she, he, they all fail. And that has done a whole lot to have joint accountability so they don't blame the other person, so-and-so didn't do it, so-and-so didn't do it. They're all jointly accountable, and if one fails, they all fail. I tell you, it changes okay. the way people work Dynamics. together. So we've got 30 seconds, and my last question to you uh, in this 30 seconds is, you know, if you could address a group of CEOs, say five, 600 CEOs in a room, and Gary has to give this big address to them, what advice, one piece of advice you would impart to them? I would say culture really matters. In most companies, culture is undervalued. They all, it's lip service, you know, they all say, have it values and everything is in the company brochures, but it's not practiced, it's not rewarded, and it's not penalized. In my opinion, what I've learned, one of the greatest tools you can have is if you have a great culture. Uh, I think, what was it, the, the management guru who said, uh, culture eats strategy for breakfast anytime. Peter, yeah, yeah. That's right. uh, uh, Peter Drucker. Uh, think, Peter yeah. Drucker. Yeah. And again, he didn't really say it, but it's, a, it, it's you know, everybody it's says it's attributed to him. Right. Right. But culture eats strategy for breakfast. Culture really, really matters. 
Gary, it's been a fabulous time talking to you here on the thank Leader Army Show. Thank you for being here and thank you for sharing your insights on how you grew Willow Creek and, and also yourself. It's my pleasure. You've been watching the Leader Army Show here.